So another weekend of Premier League action is over and well this one was easily the most erratic of this season. From red cards, late goals and absolute hammerings, there is plenty to talk about in this week's video. As we did last week, we're going to be looking at 5 things that we learned from the Premier League this weekend. Number 1. Arsenal in crisis? I mean they always are if you go on Twitter, but this week they seemed like they absolutely was no hope for the Gunners with their current tactics. In fact we spoke last week about how they don't have the squad to play 3 at the back, and this week's hammering was the final evidence that anybody needed to see that that was true. Matching a makeshift defence of Holding, Koscielny and Monreal against the menacing front 3 of Salah, Firmino and Mane was simply naive by Wenger. In fact the defence was so bad that they made the most errors this weekend with 3 and one of those errors led to a goal. As if things weren't bad enough for Arsenal, there's now news that both Oxlade Chamberlain and Alexis Sanchez look like they're on the way out of the Gunners, so they could be in some serious trouble. While it could be good news for someone like Reese Nelson, oddly Wenger has failed to bring through the youngster who had an excellent pre-season as yet to see any real game time in the Premier League. However, if they do sell Sanchez on the Ox, they'll well and truly be throwing Nelson in the deep end, so we'll have to see what happens after the international break. Should Arsenal keep sticking with three at the back? Let us know in the comments below. Number 2. Relief for Rafa Arsenal fans might have been worrying for the past couple of years, but they have had nothing on Newcastle fans who have had a little bit of a nightmare start to the season before this weekend. Three games, three losses and no real quality added to the team. How quickly things can change in 90 minutes, because Newcastle looked excellent, albeit against a pretty diabolical West Ham side. The Magpies made up for what they lacked in possession by totally pressing their opponents and making it a nightmare for West Ham's midfield to operate at all. Hosselu looked really impressive on his home debut, while Christy Natsu was a constant thorn in Slavon Bilic's side. If the Revolution is going to build upon this, then they could do a counter-attacking more like they did against West Ham, and they should be fine this season. Number 3. The August Blues continue for Harry Kane The last time that Kane scored for Spurs in August was back in 2014 when he netted against AEL Limassol in the Europa League qualifier. Since then he has played in 13 games, 898 minutes of football and had a whopping 44 shots for Spurs without producing a goal. Incredibly he's only had 10 shots on target in that time, much to the despair of anybody who's been daft enough to pick him in their fantasy football team. So did he manage to break his duck against Burnley this weekend? Well no, though he had plenty of shots. In fact he had 10 shots against Sean Dyche's side with only 5 of them hitting the target. However, he once again failed to find the back of the net, with his England teammate Tom Heaton deciding to turn into a miniature Levy Ashin for the afternoon. At least it will be September when you play again in the Premier League, eh Harry? Number 4. It's going to be a long season for the Seagulls Now there was some definite positives from Brighton's draw against Watford on Saturday, and most of those were from Anthony Knockart, who was excellent despite Miguel Britos trying to snap him in half. That being said, Chris Hewton's side really, really need to sign a striker. I mean, while Tom Hemed and Glenn Murray were good in the championship, they have got to add some more goals from somewhere. They actually created 13 chances against Watford and put over 30 crosses in, but Hemed wasn't able to do anything with them. Chris Hewton said this weekend that it's a tough market and all that he can guarantee was that he'll work hard as he can to bring in a new forward, but if they don't find another one, well, they might just find themselves in a lot of trouble by Christmas. And number 5. Time up for De Boer already? There was a time when Frank De Boer was thought of as being one of the best young managers around. However, following his nightmare at Inter Milan, his stock has somewhat diminished. And honestly, it's not going to get any better at Palace if things continue. The side have been absolutely dreadful and look totally incapable of playing De Boer's tactics. I mean, while Arsenal have failed to adapt to Wenger's new formation, the Palace players have just been absolutely awful and really don't know how to work under the Dutchman. One problem could be that the lack of signings has meant that De Boer has ended up with a majority of the squad made up from Warnock, Pardew and Sam Allardyce signings. I mean, how exactly is De Boer going to turn them in to Ajax circa 1971? At the back, they are just diabolical. They made two defensive errors against Swansea and one of those led to a goal, with Scott Dan and James Tompkins and all the rest just looking terrible this season so far. 
Palace really need a big end to the transfer window and they need to back the ball with plenty of signings or he might just be the first casualty and Palace may not be able to be rescued. And that's our list. What was your highlight from this weekend's action? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and share this video and why not hit that subscribe button and join Team Footy Feed right now.